Uh, yet is another interesting moment to talk sports in the studio and uh, a lot of events happening in the world of sports over the weekend and we're ready to do justice to hit here in the studio and one after the other we're going to do it you are on to sarah sports update where you get the necessary information that you can use in the world of sports and we talk tennis football even boss led we're going to talk boss led at this point in time in the studio this very moment but i'm not going to do that alone because roger federer broke an unprecedented uh, uh history in the in the world of tennis the oldest world number one in the history of tennis and the boss led even though the eats has not really been favorable to them but again history is already made and that's what they are going to lash on they are going to rest upon because they've really done this country but i'm not going to do that like i said before in the studio i'm not going to do it alone i have my friend my colleague a sports analyst of repute we've been together and is an analyst that really knows his onions i have with me in the studio to do justice to some of the reports we're going to do this day with prince will of vsa prince will Tunji, it's a pleasure being here once again always a pleasure when you are said on set together with me and definitely we are coming together to you know do what you know how to do best again just over the weekend something very fantastic happened in the world of tennis very unprecedented because the record was 33 years andre agassi the oldest world number one and uh, roger federer all the way even friday broke that record it, because immediately when he got to the last four of the rotterdam open everybody was able to know that this man has made history what's the makeup of this roger federer Tunji, uh, give it up all to roger federer he's an icon he's a legend uh, whatever you want to say in the world of lawn tennis, he has achieved it all. 20 Grand Slam and still running. And at 35, he's actually proven to the world that age is just a number. Um, if you look at his comeback uh, from rating number 10 to almost getting to number one, you give it to Rudolf Federer that he's one man who knows his onion, who has the tenacity and the guts to give it to the world of tennis. You know, for the championship, uh, a lot of people felt Rafael Nadal would definitely go up there. But he made a comment. He says he's just enjoying himself. And he did enjoy himself to get to that peak, and he's a legend. Well, he said he was expecting Roger, uh, Rafael Nadal to come to that competition, but Rafael Nadal was nursing an injury, couldn't make it. And that gave him that opportunity because immediately, if he was going to make the last four, like they said before that time, and eventually was able to make the last four, and went ahead also to win the Rotterdam Open. So yes, uh, uh, um, um, you know, in the case of Rafael Nadal, is a recurring injury um, for some time now. There was a time he dropped out of the circuit. He didn't play any tennis. And when he came back, he mustered so much courage to get to the number one. Uh, give it to him. But uh, Roger Federer has proven that he's a legend, a household name, and the world of tennis will never forget him. A, a, a legend, no doubt about that, that 36 still waxing stronger. Mm. And I know that record is going to stand for a very long time. It's going to linger because 33 was Andre Agassi yeah. and now 36 Roger Fedora. Let's see how it pans out, how people are going, how the, the others are going to respond in the world of tennis. But I know personally that it's going to be a record that will stand for a long time. Tomorrow. Well, you can break that if you start playing tennis, Tunji, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> you wish. <laughs> well, away from that, let's look about, uh, let's, let, let's look at the, the Nigeria's Flamingos under 17 women's national team they, they they came to benin here they could not make much impact because when immediately when they played 2-2 at that first leg i knew that there was fire on the mountain that they wouldn't get that ticket and going to yonde only yesterday we saw it and it was something that came as expected because the yonde is not a ground that they just go and get results because that cameroonian team is a free scoring side and they scored first, and Nigeria came back, they drew in that game, but it was not enough to give them that ticket. Well, they are not going to be at the World Cup. Uh, um, Tunji is very unfortunate that for the first time since 1999, the under-17 team for um, the national team of uh, Nigeria, that's the Flamingos, won't be at the World Cup. It's quite unfortunate too that uh, we don't plan too well. Uh, before this particular qualifier started, the girls were not in camp on time, and it became obvious that whatever they're going to prosecute will become an issue. When they played 2-2, 
right there in Benin. A lot of people felt we could go out and do our miracle. What is the miracle? The Nigerian spirit. But believe me, you, if you look at the Cameroonians intimidating record, the last team they played, they spanned them 8-0. That tells you the tenacity these girls brings to bear. And if you look at them, they're quite young, just like our girls. It's just unfortunate that we're not going to be there. Let's get back to the drawing board as usual and start off. Now, what's the makeup of this team now? Because when situations like this happens, you see them, they come back home and they just disband, disband the team and nothing to write home about the team again. What is going to happen to these girls? Are they going to keep them? Are they going to you know, put them in their plan? Or they are just going to discard them the way they used to do when major competition come and go like this? Well, Tunji, you know our normal tradition here. Yeah, it has become a nomenclature that uh, when a team doesn't succeed, uh, it's fatherless or rather it's motherless. Yeah. <laughs> but the good thing is that there are one or two players in the team that uh, you can actually pick out to join the under 20. And you know the under 20 will be going to the next World Cup. So it's uh, an area of stars. But do we keep them together? My answer to that is no. Because uh, if you keep them together, what would they be doing? My own view is that the few that has been spotted that can actually make up the under 20 team should be added. They will move on from there. Definitely. We'll move on from there. If they give them that platform, that opportunity to go all the way and do what they like to do and what they know how to do. And that would take me to the Super Falcons, even though I call them Super Falcons, because most of, the, most of the stars are not even in the team now. We know how this thing works. Most of the players that are playing the domestic league and under 20, the Falconers, are the ones that make up of that team now. Well, um, kudos to the girls right there in Cote d'Ivoire. They've done really well. Um, I must say, Rashida Tajibadi is my delight, having been in that particular team. Um, a player that was spotted right here in FC Robo, and uh, she has shown that she has what it takes to get to the peak. For the Sport Falcons right there in Cote d'Ivoire, I wish them the very best. They shouldn't just see this match as a mere formality. They should go out there, grab the maximum three points, and move on further. But also, don't forget that it is a tournament within the sub-region, the Wafu Cup. Mm. We need to pick it up to mm. actually boost up our archives and it's good for the girls too and this time around again they will not disappoint the green and white colors when they file out against their counterparts the let me take you on tunji the green and white colors i was expecting you to talk about the jesse the the current jesse the super eagles will use no, I, no that, that's a discussion for another day. oh you think so <laughs> it's like you have a contract <laughs> like jesse. no 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 I, I don't have a contract okay. you know? It's a discussion for another day because when you look at that jersey, I don't want to talk too much about it because if I talk too it much, reminds now, me of it will, Rashid it will aggravate a lot of things. It reminds me of Rashid Yakini. That's all. <laughs> Gangling Yakini. Gangling Yakini. No problem about that, definitely. Uh, we move on. Uh, talk about uh, the, the ladies that are doing Nigeria proud at the Winter Olympics. But really, a lot of people look at it that they are not really doing us proud. But qualifying Nigeria alone for that major championship and making history. Because no ever African country has been able to, you know, participate in the Winter Olympics. And these girls have been able to do that. Just, just, this, just, just this last weekend, Simidele Adiagbo could not make it to, you know, when it really mattered most. But again, like I said before, she's been able to, you know, make history as a very first person, singular person, that will compete at the Winter Olympics on the soil of, you know, South Korea, Pinjang, South Korea. That's where the competition is hosting. But again, it's making history as the first African that will compete at that, you know, competition that is ongoing in South Korea as we speak. What do you make up of it? Because the others, talking about the bustlet, because immediately is contesting, uh, contested at the uh, skeleton uh, event, which she didn't really make impact. She came last. But again, she gave it a, a you know, a right. shot. And that's what most Nigerians are really talking about. Because when you bring in somebody that put in all their efforts, to make history, even though whatever comes out of it, even before they left the shore of this country, people have said that whether they win or they don't win, definitely they have made Nigeria proud, they have made history. So what will you say to what we are seeing in South Korea at this point in time? Tunji, uh, with absolute all humility and sincerity, I want to give those girls thumb up. Uh, it's not easy to summon the courage to represent your country. If you look at the history of those young ladies, they are all based in the US. And they decided to make up their mind to represent Nigeria in the Winter Olympic. First and foremost, it is historic. Secondly, it is monumental. And thirdly, it is so encouraging to other people who are actually in diaspora to also want to do something for your country. For me, I don't think it's a waste of time. Um, except we don't understand the Olympic team. 
simply participate. When you participate, the spirit of participation becomes that driving force. They've taken the first cue. They want to come back. We should encourage them. Mind you, a lot of finances that had gone into training were self-sponsored. So for me, I think we should encourage them and give them a big thumb up. Well, the other three, Shehun Adigun, Ngozi, Owureme, Akuoma, Omeoga, will be competing tomorrow if they are able to make it beyond uh, the level as it is now. The eat. I think they came last. Yes, yet. they came last. But again, I think they can pick up, uh, you know, do some. Let's just support them. It. It's not easy. Definitely. I, I support you 100% about that. And I know that with what is going on now, maybe the Nigerian spirit could push them maybe to do something. But beyond that. Which of the spirits? But, but <laughs> Define the spirit. <laughs> the Nigerian spirit, that's what, they, that's what is, you know, common in sports now. Yeah. They say the Nigerian spirit will push them when you don't put necessary things in place. We have three when types of spirits. Change spirit, <laughs> ruba ruba spirit, agba ruba spirit. Define them. <laughs> Definitely. When you look at it, the Nigerian spirit, that's what they tell us in sports, that even if preparation is not there, the Nigerian just fight, spirit, the fight Nigerian on. Spirit will carry fight them on. on. Okay. <laughs> we go, let's just hope the Nigerian spirit will push them. But beyond that, just to be very, very honest, to be frank at this they point, they deserve all encouragement. They deserve all the encouragement. They've done Nigeria proud. Yeah. And we must give it to them. So definitely, let's move on from there, from Prince Chang Chai, in South Korea. They are doing what they know how to do for Nigeria, and we wish them all the best when they come out to compete against their counterparts as the competition is going on. Mm. Definitely, we are looking at uh, the Nigerian League now. Very, very quickly, we are in week nine. And, you know, we saw six goals, six goals thriller, three away goals. Katsina, uh, uh, talking about uh, Quara United, was able to go to Lafia and score three goals. In the 3-3. But then, kudos must be given because when you score three away goals, even though if you don't win, it's a big plus mm. to them. So week nine, and uh, let, uh, me run, uh, let me um, just run through the results. Okay. Abia Warriors play 3-1 against Yobe Desert Stars. Ekanemi 2-1 against Go Round. Heartland play, play 2-1 winners against Wiki Tories. Kanu Pillars, and that's what we eventually saw control, uh, a tragedy that happened after the game. Pillars played 1-1 with Aimba FC. Katsina United played 3-0, won 3-0 against FC Fanyuba. Nasarawa United played 3-3 against Kwara United. Rivers United played 2-0 against Tornados. And on Friday, MFM defeated Hakwa United and one of the rescheduled MPFL game, and it ended in favor of MFM. So what's the makeup of this, this result that we've seen in the MPFL so far? Uh, well, in the, honestly speaking, I think um, so much... Um, Impute from the LMC and the MPFL. It has been a league a lot of people wants to see improve. Is it improving? Yes, it is improving. And we've seen that, uh, um, most importantly, the fiasco of teams going away and not getting a win or a draw and leaving the stadium becomes a, a, a dreadful affair is no longer there. Mm -hmm. Teams can actually go away, pick wins, pick draws. For this weekend, um, the most dreadful thing that happened was that wonderful player, Udoji, that died. Mm, I was going to come to that. Yeah, it, 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 it shocked everybody beyond um, one's expectation. This is a player who captained Ayimba. Mm. From Ayimba, he moved to Kanu Pillars. They call him the Rock. Mm. And um, the scenario that transcended his death is still a mystery, mm. but only God knows. And we say, may so rest perfect peace. But back to the league, it is fantastic because we're seeing goals. I've always been concerned about goals in the league. And without goals, the, the interest of the fans is driven away and we're seeing that right now and that is very very spectacular but my my major concern has been a way victory we've not been seeing much of a way victory even though this the season is still young but again you look at it when you go away from home on the road and you pick victories it shows the credibility of that league no no we've not, no we've not been able to see much of that this season no Tunji, in week two week three week six they were away victories. Mm. They were even away draws. Mm. Mind you, all teams don't want to give in. Everybody wants the three maximum points. And when you begin to do that, it, it also gives the fans the confidence to come back to the stadia mm. to watch games. So there have been couples of away victories, away draws. But what is so interesting is that that fiasco of teams going away with that dreadfulness of will be beaten, will be molested, even if Sunshine um, is paying for the price of actually train the fans train object into the field and the referee got injured, three points deducted, three games played um, in the stadium with our fans. It's not enough to me. I, I, I think what the LMC should be doing right now is 
fining this club heavily. If, mm -hmm. if, if you are to pay 10 to 20 million naira for an offense, you have to caution. So three points is not enough for all of this. It's not enough yeah. for me. It's not well, enough. No doubt about that. I, I'm with you because uh, he who uh, wears the shoes knows where his Red pinches. pinches. Because you know you've been covering the game, you've been following sports, you've been reporting sports for a long time. And I, you know, go with your judgment when it comes to things like this. Uh, uh, definitely, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Idoji. Yeah. Because a great, fantastic player. When the news came this morning, because I didn't get to see much of this. I didn't hear about this last night. It was one where he was even the man of the match in that yes. game. Yes, yes, he but was. Suddenly, they said he went to visit, visit uh, his former teammates, and on, on, on his way going back, he had an auto accident, and uh, the, the man is no more as we speak. So, well, it's, it's so sad. It's it, so sad. It's very sad, so sad, considering the caliber of player and the status he has been able to build for himself as mm. a former captain of mm. one of the biggest teams mm. in this land. Talking about Eyimba, he's a well-respected player among his. Folks, and he's somebody who commands that think he, respect. He spent over seven years in Ayimba. Yes, in Ayimba. That's why he, he became the captain for Yes, two and he said he needed a new challenge. Exactly. And that was and why he moved, moved to, to Canopy 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 It's just unfortunate that we're losing such a tremendous talent. Mm. Very unfortunate. One of the best defenders in the NBA. Obviously, obviously. You can say that again. Definitely, I will not go without talking about the preview of the Champions League because it's the heat of the moment now. <laughs> You want to see because a lot of people are really, really putting their money I, I like where this. their I like this. now. Tunji, you, you support a club. Should I tell your viewers the club is for? Because it, it's, no, it's, allowed, it's allowed. It's, it's allowed. allowed. <laughs> uh, 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 Chelsea should get ready. They might pack their bag no, and no, move no, no. on. No, no, no. I said they might. I, I'm not saying they pack their bag. But that's, no, no, but they know how to pack the bus. Well, probably that's what Mourinho left, and he's doing that in Manchester United. Maybe they will pack the bus tonight uh, on Tuesday. Maybe they will pack the bus because when you look at some of these things now, they said there's a kind of sheer lock when Chelsea is playing Barcelona, and you know Barca doesn't really get it get it easy. Messi being Chelsea. fit or Messi on the bench? No, no. What, what, look, looking at the weekend, both both teams played over the, the weekend. Messi being fit and, or Messi and, on and the look bench? At, look at it. Even Chelsea has not been able to churn out the kind of results. Yes, yes, but, la yes, but lately, yes. I think their last game, you look at it, it's not the kind of opposition... Okay, the first zero, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the kind of opposition people would like to see. <laughs> but again, Barcelona again, 1-2-0, you know. And you, you, no. you, you, you look at no. it, Tunji. Barca has been in the best of form. Tunji, it's no going to be a cracker, that. no doubt about I, it. I want to ask you this question. Okay. I want to ask you this question. Because when you when you look at it, a lot of rasmatas is going on now. Obviously, a lot of people wants to see because a lot of pundits, people that are betting now. I don't know about that. They are putting their money. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> they are putting their money where their mouth is. Some are going for Barcelona. Some are going for Chelsea. In all honesty, looking at what is happening with the two teams at this point in time, which team will you pick ahead of the other between uh, Chelsea? And Barcelona, knowing fully well that like Chelsea will be playing at Stamford Bridge, they are playing at all. Tinju, you're putting me on the hot seat. Even if I'm already on the hot seat, you're putting I me... Know, I know you have a soft soft spot for, for Barcelona. No, if you talk about Real Madrid, I want to go for that. For Barcelona, I, I, I believe they play one of the best football in the world. But I don't like their philosophy per se, especially on the youth development area. Mm. Um, I have my reservation. Mm. But if you look at this game coming up tomorrow, it's a cracker. These are the kind of games you want to see in the finals. Mm. Because Chelsea has a strong pedigree. That means it's coming early. Yes. Early. Very, very early. Round of 16. Exactly. Chelsea has a strong pedigree. They're former champions. Mm -hmm. Barcelona also has a strong pedigree as overtime champions over time. Uh, for both teams, I think what will win the game for both teams is the midfield. Mm. Uh, how tactful Conte will be is also an issue. Considering his state of uh, in trauma of Chelsea not doing too well mm. in the EPL. Mm. For... For Barcelona, I think they're just coming to catch the phone. Mm. But I want to say this. It might end up in the team that take the first goal. Oh. So, any team that's caught... People that want to put their money, they are listening. No, they shouldn't, they they shouldn't take me serious. <laughs> but I know that the team that takes the first goal... They want to take the stake. Yes. Uh, the stakes are high. It's okay, but, <laughs> but, but I see Chelsea coming out to prove a point. Okay. What is the point? A lot of people are saying, can they really live up to the billing? Mm. Barcelona has nothing to prove. But Chelsea does. Well, some are saying that uh, uh, Conte's future is hanging by thread. No, I don't think so. If he's able to win this game, he will, he will keep his job. I don't think so. If, he, think so. if he loses this game, he's going to lose his job. Tunji, I still stick on my ground. I don't think <laughs> no, so. No, that, that's, that's, that's what is going on everywhere now. What is going on everywhere is quite distinct from what the board thinks. Mm. But, the, but, but people are saying that uh, the, the owner of Chelsea, Roman Abramovich, is a no-nonsense person. A no-nonsense person. Because the team is not doing well in the EPL. But don't forget that he also told Conte... If they crash out of the Champions League again, 
maybe Conte, my Conte himself, no, no. Conte himself is no tune is somehow now. No, Abramovich told Conte, go okay. and do your job. Okay. Let's see what the season okay, looks like. Okay, you are speaking for Abramovich now. That I'm quoting him. I'm quoting him. <laughs> well, well, things can things can change in a in a twinkle of an eye. You, you never can tell. In all honesty, do you want Chelsea to lose? Well, in all honesty, Tunji, <laughs> <laughs> I caught you there. No, but, <laughs> the truth of the matter is, I want to watch good games. Yes. I want to watch good football. And I know that Barcelona will come all out. And with the form Edwin Hazard is right now, yes, definitely. Going to be an and he just, he, he just told everybody now that he's happy at Chelsea. He's not going because there are, there are rumors him going to either Real Madrid or PSG. But he just told everybody now that he's staying in, with Chelsea. He's happy with Chelsea. And Until the season Chelsea. ends. Too. But well, these players, you can never trust them. Exactly. You never can trust them. Exactly. Because today they might say something, another time, you know, the, the music might change. But again, the other game, Chelsea game is not just the only game for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. We also have uh, Bayern Munich taking on Besiktas. But the Chelsea game has has overshadowed, has beclouded this uh, yes. uh, Bayern Munich Besiktas because they realize that Bayern Munich will always override uh, Besiktas. So, but in football, uh, uh, anything in, can in, happen. In football, anything is possible. Hmm. But if you look at the current um, trend and the current upkeep of Bayern Munich right here in the Bundesliga, you want to give it to them. Uh, since Hikins came back to the team, he has been able to rejuvenate the spirit of, especially Ribéry, and you, 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 you see a new formation coming to beer. Even in his sick bed, those guys played for him. Mm -hmm. So uh, Bayern Munich, Bekistas, it's not a one-off game. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an interesting game, but give it to Bayern Munich. Okay, definitely give it to Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich will take the day. But Chelsea and Barcelona, that is what we don't know. Yes. It's going to be a very it's tight, a cracker. very it's tight a cracker. game. It's a cracker. And everybody's looking up forward to that game. So definitely that's how we're going to wrap up on Sarah Sports Update this afternoon. And uh, special kudos to uh, Prince Will of Yeson. For having you in the studio of Star Sarah TV, it's a pleasure we to be call here. you, you definitely come on board. Anytime. Uh, definitely, uh, we, we appreciate that. And we hope when we call again, you will come on board. Thanks for watching us as we drop the handcuff.